Welcome to my channel once again. This is your man Alam, and today's tutorial we are going to dive into menstruation two. That's surface area and volume of solid figures. And so, without much ado, when we talk about menstruation, it simply means measurement. It simply means measurement. The act or process of measuring. So mathematically, we can say that menstruation is a branch of geometry that deals with the derivation and use of algebraic expression and algebraic formulae to measure and compute the length, area, parameters, and volumes of various two-dimensional and three-dimensional solid figures. So that is the definition for um, measuration. The measuration two actually talks about the surface area, volume of solid, and the earth as a sphere. So spherical figures and solid figures, and the surface area and the volume. In plane geometry one, you may not have volume there. Okay, so let's do some comparison here. Measuration one talks about the two-dimensional figures and in that place there's no depth or height so we don't have height it's a, they are flat surfaces and they are only two dimensions we only have the length and the width the example is a rectangle we only have length and width then we compute the measurement of only area and parameter there's no volume in measuration one which we can also see we that other topic that is the angle theorems so examples of the plane figures or two-dimensional figures are the circles triangles square pentagon and many others now when we talk about the measuration two we basically deals with solid or three-dimensional figures and in this one we have height that is depth and there are three dimensions the length, width, and height. So anytime you are dealing with menstruation two, you should know that we are dealing with um, these three dimensions, length, width, and height. In the, in the two dimensions, we only have length and width, but there's no height. That makes you a two dimension. In the three dimensions, you have the length, the width, and the height, okay? We compute the measurement of area, perimeter, and volume. In measuration one, there is no volume, but in measuration two, we have area, the parameter, and then the volume. Now, we example is the cuboid, the sphere, prism, cylinder, cone, and and many others that are solid figures. Okay, now the combination of two or more two-dimensional figures form the net of a solid figure, which is the three-dimensional figure, all right? So when the net is folded, we get a solid figure. Example, if we are considering the net of a shape, we see the net of a shape, which is also called a geometric net. It's a term used to describe what a three-dimensional shape would be like if it was opened out and laid flat. So you see that this figure is laid flat like this. So it means it's a net of a three-dimensional figure. It is flat. When you fold it, you get a cone. Now, let's look at the base radius of a cone. When we fold the net, we get our cone. That one that was flat, this one, when you fold it, you get a cone. When a 3D shape is unfolded, we get the net of that ship, okay? But when it is folded, we get the three-dimensional figure. So 3D shapes can have more than one possible net. So let's take this picture for example. So this is a net of a cone. When you fold it, you have this. So you just fold it and you realize that A, B forms a circle under here. When you have a new radius for that one and this is a three-dimensional figure because now we have height 
and we have the base all right now another terminologies we can look at is the curved surface area when we talk about the curved surface area we are referring to the surface or the area that is covering a three-dimensional figure but to be able to understand that we got to look at the flat surfaces that is the non-exemplar so that we can be able to get what the curved surface area is now the flat surfaces are called plane surfaces example are the surfaces of a book matches box table and many others so the surface the flat surface example we have this this is this is this is a rectangle we have a circle a triangle and these are also two dimensional figures when you're looking at it if you are looking at a table at the top flat part it looks like a two dimensional figure unless you are looking at a side way you can see that it has formed a three dimensional plane figure but we're looking at the flat surface so which is forming only two dimensions we have only the, the height and then the width so the surface which are not flat are called curved surface an example are the spherical object so this is an example so this is flat and the areas who are not flat are called the curved surface so curved surface right and this is another example now there are shapes which have both plane and curved surface example of the cylinder the keyboard and so you have an example of a cylinder here and this is a keyboard now the region or area occupied by only the curved surface of a shape is termed as the curved surface area so we have this this the region we are talking about this is a curved surface area now this this one is the when you fold it you have a rounded cylinder now the top and the bottom is covered by two circles the lid now when we are talking about the curved surface area it is the one that you can fold so this one the rectangle here so when you find the area of the rectangle that's the length times the, the breadth you are getting the curved surface area for the cylinder excluding the circle that's the lid excluding the top here and the down there what you calculate is the curved surface area of the cylinder now when you come to the keyboard here too all these rectangles or boxes when you calculate this area we have the curved surface area now when you want to get a total curved surface area it means i'm going to find all the area of the boxes and add them then i have the total curved surface area please stay tuned and you can rewind the video as much as you want to get it very well understood now the total surface area like i made mention is the sum of the area or regions occupied by the surfaces flat caves okay the flat caves this is one it's a curved surface and this another curved surface this another curved surface all right and the cylinder is just one curved surface which is the one we have spread out here so when you're able to add all this we get the total curved surface area now when you come here this one out and this one out when you add the area of this um Circle here, which is pi r square in the area here with this you get a total curved surface area for the keyboard all right now these are examples of three dimensional figures we have the key we have the rectangular prism or the keyboard we have the cone and this is the these are their net so to find the area of the cone you will need to get the base area that is a circle the base place is a circle so you find the area of a the circle then you find the area of the sector then you add it together to get the total surface area for the cone likewise you do the same to the cylinder okay so these are other plane figures you have the key the keyboard the triangular prism the pyramids and this by the way so now i want us to deal with the cone cone what is it when we talk about the cone we are referring to a solid figure 
that has a cylinder face that's a cylinder face on one end that's a cylinder face on one end all right call the base so you know what a cylinder is it has a circle at one end and other ends so a circle which are equal so it's a cylinder but here it is only one end that is like a circle but the other end is pointed okay and when that happens then we call it what a cone and a point at the other end where the sides meet which is what i just described some example are females christmas heart and eyes so let me just give you an example so we have the christmas tree you can see how it is forming you call it a cone it's a cone and ice cream is a perfect example of a cone and plain top it's an example and we can illustrate as this so the down here is forming a circle that's why we say that it is like a cylinder with one side but the other side is pointed now the top here is what we call the apex and we have the slanted height the slanted height then we have the base which is what we just talked about so the circle so we have if you have one of the circle on top and you join them you form a cylinder but here's the case you only have one base and we have it apexing now we have the height and then the base radius so this is the part of a cone okay now the base radius of a cone so we, we need to consider the sector below this is this circle and it's a sector cut out of the circle when i cut it out and pick it out as this we can fold it to now form what a cone we want to drive the formula of the finding the area of a cone from the circle okay because we know what a circumference is which is 2 pi r then we know what the formula for finding the area of a circle which is pi r squared so using that we can be able to deal with the cone successfully so the relationship between the radius of a circle and the base radius of the cone is that we have this is a circle right and this is the radius of this circle labeled with a big r o b is the radius of the circle the length of arc a b is equal to the circumference of the base of a cone the length here is equal to the circumference of the cone remember when we, we fold that it we will get the cone we fold this we get the cone and once you fold it the a b forms a circle under Try to picture it there, and then the formula for finding the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, like I made mention. Then the length of arc AB is the angle here divided by 360 because the total angle of the circle is 360. So we pick this divided by 360 times 2 pi r, and 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle where r is the radius and here the radius is labeled as capital r that's why we have the capital r here all right now we can cut out that place and we still have the arc forming here a b and then we have the radius o a and o b we can fold this to form a cone and once it's form a cone we have a new height in a new radius so the a b here has formed a circle down and we have a new radius for it so the big r here remember when you fold it it has become the slanted height which is the l and the small radius has become the base radius of the cone so these are the two different radius that we have after you have taken this and you have formed the um cone with it so now it implies that if the area of the, the, the length, sorry, the length of AB is beta over 360 times 2 pi r, it, which is equal to the circle here, it means that if you, if you are finding the circumference of the base area, the base circle here, you are going to get beta over 360 times 2 pi r, which is this is equal to 2 pi r the whole 
base circle that is this small r that's the relationship here so this length ab is equal to the whole of the base circumference here now the base radius of a cone which is what we have just illustrated to calculate the base radius of a cone make r the subject in the equation above so you are find the small r so you have to make the small r the subject by dividing through by 2 pi so if i divide here by 2 pi then divide it by 2 pi it means that 2 pi and 2 pi goes away then 2 pi and 2 pi also go away leaving r implying that we have the beta over 360 times r because this one has gone leaving only r which is equal to this also goes leaving a small r now implying beta times r is beta r over 360 is equal to a small r so anywhere you find the base radius you can just code this formula and you can easily get it so the base radius is this small r we have found okay all right and easily as you, you can you can imagine the slanted height here is the big r and then the whole of this is the angle here all right now finding the curved surface area of a cone the sector of the circle is also known as the curved surface of the cone and the net of the cone as well so the sector of the cone like the one we just made mention like this all right the curved surface area if you are finding the area of this is a curved surface area for the net of a cone that's the curved surface area is the same as the area of the sector area of the sector is this beta over 360 times pi r square and the r here is the big r so if you are finding the curved surface area of a cone you can just code this formula you are good to go therefore the curved surface area of a cone is um beta over 360 times pi r squared which is equal to beta times r so we are just splitting the r here so r times r is r squared just splitting it we are trying to find something here now we know remember the previous one we have dealt with this already the base radius is equal to beta r over 360 degree right so we can replace it with this then we can have r we have placed the small the, this one with the small r now we have pi r then the small r that's why we have this so anytime they ask you to find the curved surface area of a cone you can just code this pi r the big r or pi r l because when you fold it the big r here becomes the slanted height which is just what I've quoted here. So R is the radius of the circle, the slant height of the cone. Okay. So we got to take one example and we are good to go. And we are good to go. So let's get into it. And off. So let's take one example and we delve into it. So the question is saying that a sector of angle 130 degree is removed from a thin circle sheet of radius 4 feet centimeters. It is then folded with the straight edges coinciding to form a right circular cone. Calculate I, the base reduce correct to two significant figures so we want to deal with that one first but then the second I, I is saying that calculate the total surface area of the cone and the last one is the height of the cone so let's deal with the first one the base radius correct to two significant figures now solution we have this is a circle this is a circle with a circular sheet drawn right then the sector is this the sector is this and the angle formed is 130 degree the angle form is 130 degree now the radius r is 40 centimeters again 
Now, this sector is cut out and folded to form a cone. So it has been cut out to form a cone. Now, remember, this is the radius of the circle. And the radius of the circle has become the slanted height of the cone because you have folded it this way and then AB, the arc AB has become the base circle here. Now a new radius has been formed and the height. And the question is asking us to find the base radius, which is this small r. Okay, so with that, we can go in. The angle B, that's beta Rory. The beta is the 130 degree. Radius of the, the circular seat is for R, which is the capital R, is equal to 40 centimeters. Therefore, the base radius R is giving us R equal to beta R over 360 degree, which is what we have derived in the previous um, slide. Now, once we have gotten this, I can just put in the figure substitute inside and you get your answer so beta is the angle which is 130 and the capital r is the radius of the circle okay divide by 360 which is the total angle for a circle and this gives me 14.4 then that's running to the two decimal place will, will, will give me um two significant figures rather will give me one four centimeters that's 14 centimeters now the total surface area of the cone if the cone is a solid cone or has a base then the total area of a solid cone or a cone whose base is covered is equal to the curved surface area plus the area of the base now remember if the base is opened if the base is opened and it's not covered it means that the area will only be the curved surface area but if it is closed then we find the area of the base which is usually a circle the base remember this base of a um cone is a circle now this implies that the total surface area of a solid cone is equal to the curved surface area which is beta over 360 times pi r squared which we find in the previous one we simplified as pi r the capital r the r here is the base radius plus the area of the base is a circle the base is a circle right so pi r squared so anytime you ask to find the total surface area of a solid cone then this is the formula you are going to use if it is specified that the base is opened then this one is not there because there's no circle to add so you only have the curve surface area just like this so if the base here is covered so the base here is a circle so that's the formula for the circle here so you find the area of the base and then the area of the curve surface and then you add them together now remember when they talk about the total surface area it means that find the area of everything in the figure and you add them together and then you'll be able to go this is the curve surface this is a curve surface this is what is folded to get this so if you find the curve surface is only this all right and the base is a circle so you find this plus this to get the total surface area but if the base area is not requested for that is they say that the base is opened it is opened therefore you don't need to calculate this okay now if i'm adding the curved surface area plus the base of the circle here then i'll get the total surface area for the cone now to continue the total surface area of a solid cone is equal to the curved surface area plus the area of the base so we are going to solve the ii of our question the total surface area of a solid cone is equal to this and then recall from our question we realize that the big r was 40 centimeters the big r is the radius for the circle where the 
um, the sector was carved out. And the pie is 22 over 7. That is the pie. If it's given to you in the question, you will have to use that one. Okay. It's mostly it's given to you as 3.142. So you can use that one to do it. And the base radius we have found, correct to two significant figures, is 14 centimeters. Man, remember, if you are continue working and you are in the calculator, it's good to still leave it in the decimal form to use it to work. If you are working with the calculator to get the other subsequent answers, it's good. This one is to run it, but when you are solving it, leave it in the decimal place in your calculator and find it. Now, the curved surface area is this. So let's find the curved surface area of that cone before we get the base area. So the curved surface is equal to pi, and pi is 22 over 7, times 14 centimeters. This 14 here is the base radius, times 40, which is the big R here, the radius of the circle, where the sector was carved out. And when you do your algorithm very well, you are going to get this as the answer for the curved surface area. Now, if they say that the cone, the base is opened, you only present this as your total surface area. But if it is closed, then you have to find the area of that circle, which is the base area, which is pi r squared, because the circle, pi r squared is the area of a circle. And you do the substitution, and you get the answer as, 616 centimeters squared. Remember, the unit of area is always in squared. If you find the area without putting the squared, they will mark you down because it's not its area. Why is it so? You, If you have forgotten cra, but we have the centimeters times centimeters, that will give you centimeters squared. You can remember that. If it's a volume, volume, we have height inside so we have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters that will give you keep so volume is always in keep and then area is always in square the area of anything is always in what square square unit so if there's no unit right there square unit so therefore the total surface area of the solid cone is the curved surface area which is 1760 centimeters squared plus 616 centimeters squared and Finally, we give you 2,376 centimeters squared. So we have answered the second part of the question. Now, we continue. They say we should find the height of the cone. Now, remember, we have folded it and slant the radius of the sector has now become the slanted height of the cone, which is the 40 centimeters. Now, the arc, which AB, has been folded to form a circle. And therefore, we have a new radius, a small r, which was found to get 14 centimeters. Now, we are looking for the height of the cone, the h. Now, we can pick this out. Okay? We can pick this small out, and we can use the Pythagoras theorem to go about it. So, from the Pythagoras theorem, the longer side, the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the two sides. So, we have the h squared plus r squared. The r here is what? The radius, the base radius. So that's what we have labeled as 14 centimeters. And therefore, making h here the subject, you will have h to be equal to the root of l squared minus r squared. That is, yes, if you take this r across the equal sign, you get l squared minus r squared. Then you take the root on both sides to remove the square from the h, right? Now you can now do the substitution. L is 40 centimeters, which is the big R that was here, the same as the L. And then we have the base radius, which is R, 14 centimeters. Then you square it, implying that 40 squares is 1,600 minus 14 squared is 196. And that was going to give me... Um, 1,404 if you subtract it. And you take the root of this, we're going to get 37.4699 centimeters. You can use this figure to be working with the other questions you may get. So therefore, 
the height of the cone is 337 centimeters to the nearest centimeters, right? Or to two significant figures. Now, we want to find the volume of a cone. Finding the volume of a cone. To get the volume of a cone, we must understand what volume is. So from a lot of experiments, the volume of a cone is one third of that of the cylinder of the, of the same height and radius. So if you have um, a cylinder with the same height and the same radius of a cone, it means that the cone volume of the cone is one third of that of the cylinder. That is what we are trying to say here. And the volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of the base times height. Base area times size. So just keep this in mind that most of the um, solid figures you are we are dealing with, if they ask to find the volume, find the base area and multiply by the height. If it's a cuboid, if it's a cube, find the base area. A cube, the base area is a square. So find base area times height. Okay. If it's a cuboid, find the base area times height. That's why you have the length times breadth times width. And then in the square or the cube or yeah you have the same thing over there now area of the base is pi r squared because the area of a cylinder is a circle so we have pi r squared and the height h so therefore we have volume of a cylinder to be equal to pi r squared h base area times height now, if you have gotten the volume of a cylinder, we said one third of these will give me the volume of a cone. So one third of that will give me the volume of a cone is equal to one third of pi r square h. Remember, volume of a cylinder is pi r square h. Volume of a cone is one third of pi r square h. Then you are good to go. Now let's look at some terminologies. The volume of solids. The amount of space occupied by a three-dimensional figure is the volume of that figure. Okay, the amount of space occupied by it. The space enclosed by a solid figure is called its volume. Volume is measured in cubic unit. I made mention it earlier on. So, the volume of a cone is one third times pi r squared h. Take note, and that's what we are going to be dealing with. Let's get this example. It's a continuation from the previous video. So you, if you have not watched the other video, you can just go to my channel right now and then you can take a look at it. But let's solve this example. We are finding the volume here. Now, a sector of an angle 130 degree is removed from a 10 circular sheet of radius 40 centimeters. It is then folded with the straight edges coinciding to form a right circular cone. Calculate the base radius correct to two significant figures. Then the semi-vertical angle, the volume in centimeters keep to two significant figures. And then you take pi to be 3.142. Let's get into it. Now this is a circle and the description here is that a sector AB have been carved out and the angle from the angle of sector is 130 degree now the radius of this circle is 40 centimeters from the question so you have to digest the question into a figurative form then you can start solving it now this one is taken out and folded this part so AB folded to form this cone so the arc a b has become the base circle here and then the radius r in the circle has become the slanted height all right and now they are saying that after this has been formed you can see another angle formed here the vertical angle formed here and that's what the ii is actually to find to find now we get solution Angle beta is 130 degree. 
the radius of the circular seat that is the capital R the circle is 40 centimeters so base radius R is giving us R equal to the angle times the big R over 360 okay like I said you can watch my previous video to get how we got the R now just finding the R sub do substitution and your R is equal to 14.4 centimeters please if you like the video don't forget to hit on that like button and the subscription button and more to the point the notification bell so that when i release any other new video you will not be left out just to continue now the base radius is 14 centimeters to the nearest two significant figures now we get the cone out from what we have just got in so i want to draw the cone draw the cone over here drawing it so the base radius is this and the height is this right so we want to find the ii the ii says we to find the semi vertical angle which is the angle here now we already know r we want to find this so from the trigonometric rule which can also be applied in the Pythagoras theorem we can say that sine of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent looking at where the thing is all right looking at where the angle is so we can easily digest it very well um, so we can simplify it taking the inverse of sine and means that a is equal to um, 21 degree that's why alpha is equal to 21 degree therefore the vertical angle is equal to 21 degree so we have already solved the ii all right we have already solved the ii now the last part of the question asks us to find the volume of the cone and we remember the volume of a cone is giving us one third of the area of a cylinder which is one third pi r squared h we need to find the h before we can get the volume because we already know small r to be 14 we know the um slanted height but we don't know the mean height that we are going to use so from the Pythagoras theorem we can find the h here and h is equal to a squared is equal to 40 squared you just do substitution 40 squared minus 14.4 centimeters squared so that this 14 squared it means that now this minus that will give me this so we now take the root on both sides to get only h which is equal to 37.3 take note of that so the height is 37.3 centimeters we can now substitute that inside the formula one third pi r squared h. So the volume is equal to one third times pi. And the question they say we should use pi as 33.142. So that's what we have just changed it here. Times the base radius, which is 14.4 centimeters squared, times 37.3, which is the height we just found. And this is finally equal to. 8100.629 centimeters keep so the unit is supposed to be there don't forget to put the unit okay at the latter part and then we said to correct it to the nearest centimeters and that is how come we have this so calculating for the volume of a keep uh, a cone should not be something difficult for us to and I please if the video has blessed you don't forget to leave a comment so that I can improve upon it, subscribe and share, and don't forget to like so that YouTube can promote my videos to a lot of audience.